Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. How are you guys doing today on a Thursday? Wow, this month is rolling through really quickly. May 26 already. So we are going to go through a lot of material today, as always. A lot of things going on. Been praying for Texas. I'll tell you, a sad situation. I'm going to be having a Pastor Dowell give a comment on that. Uh, I'm going to be showing some news uh, announcements. Uh, some of the things I can't show, play, you know, but I will be showing you some announcements that you need to go look at uh, in your time. Uh, so I will be showing those in a minute, and then I'm going to get into Israel news uh, and some other news going on. Uh, we got an asteroid coming here. Oh, my birthday. Wow, on May 27th. Uh, so uh, I was trying to re wait for that uh, report to come up, and I couldn't get it to come up, but I will talk about that later. Uh, and we got a lot of things coming on. Um, it's just a lot going on, as always. I had a revelation given to me yesterday. I'm definitely going to be sharing that. We're going to be talking about Joel 2, Acts 2, and we're going to get into Ezekiel 7th chapter, okay, that we're going to do the entire thing. But uh, I'm going to just give you a revelation I got last night when I was praying. And the Father is so, oh, he's just amazing, amazing. I never would have known anything about Acts 2 compared to Joel 2. But he showed me that last night. Uh, we have two messengers coming from uh, my brother up in Vermont. We can't give his name. He have a new YouTube channel called You Be Ready. You Be Ready, like the letter U, the letter B, and ready. So I'm going to be uh, sharing his uh, message. And then we're going to get a message from Servant of God. Uh, time is right. Time is right. So we have a lot to cover. Let's get to it. Uh, go through here to fair use notice. Uh, the claimer in front of you. And uh, wow, I'm just excited as I can be. I know it's sad times, but it's good times. And so we're going to have to be getting ready, getting ready for our Savior to come. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and show you some uh, updates. And then I'm going to get into Israel news. Uh, this is coming about the update on the potential May 31st. Tall, I even I can't even pronounce this, people. Sorry. <laughs> Herculid, okay, Herculid meteor storm. If the skies are clear, be sure to watch for a potential tall Herculid meteor outburst early next Tuesday morning. With a little cosmic luck, we could potentially be in for a meteor storm of epic, epic uh, proportions this coming Monday night, Tuesday morning. We recently wrote about the possibility for an outburst, okay? So I'm just going to leave that. Uh, rest you can go to universe today click on these tabs here you can get more information on it uh, so also I'm going to go over here to Colorado Colorado is about to spend a half a billion dollars on mental health but can it buy meaningful change uh, you know I was just thinking about that myself but all the mental health gone over all the whole world I know Carrie Geddon talked about it you know as well how they're going to have more of the mental health in the news and so we know a lot of things are going on from the mental health in the news because of all these things coming on the earth Yeshua even told us that people are going to have massive heart attacks uh, we're going to have all kind of things happening from the things coming on the earth so we should be praying that we can escape these things coming on the earth and that he will give us peace for our peace, peace peace peace peace people and our mind hearts and souls because it's going to be a lot more things coming so it says here while he while it has long dealt with depression and anxiety, Joshua Hussar's major mental health symptoms didn't appear until he was 25. And the first time they did, they were devastating. Hussar on the, a walk with his three-year-old daughter through a park in Denver. And I'm not going to even get into it. You go to the CPR.org and look at the rest of it. Because some of these things I can't play on here, you know, you have to go and look at it on your own, okay? So I'm just announcing it to you. Uh, we have another announcement here I definitely want you to hear. If I can find it here now, uh, coming from, um, uh, bear with me, people. I have a lot, of even, a lot of things up here to cover, and I don't forget where I post them at. So hold on, let me show you where it is. I think it's coming from uh, Midnight Channel, the Midnight Channel. Um, Oh, man, I don't know. Hold on a minute here. 
Okay, yeah, let me go, let me go to this too. I'll, let me go to this too. Maybe I'll run into it later. But uh, you heard about the tragedy over in Texas. Uh, at least 19 children, two teachers killed in Texas elementary school shooting. A total of 18 children and three adults was killed in a shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas on Tuesday, May 24th. Texas Senator Roland Gutierrez, Godar I can't pronounce that, G-U-T-I-E-R-R-E-Z, -E -E announced by the Associated Press. He said he was briefed by Texas State Police prior to his announcement. Uh, so we know all this is going on. We are praying for Texas, praying for the sad little children. I mean, you know, I have grandchildren. You have grandchildren probably. Not a sad thing. Not a good thing. It's very, very sad, people. Ten-year-olds uh, dying, all of them in the same classroom. It's just really sad to me. I will put another link in the description box from um, a news I did watch here a while ago. I might show it to you later uh, that you can go listen to this, giving an update on it. Very good update on it, okay? Uh, and I like their news channel. You get a lot of news from their channel. Uh, they're talking about it here, Texas school shooting victims, full list of the teachers and the students killed. Uh, so it's also in this article, if you scroll down. But I tell you, it's a very sad situation, and it's going to be a lot more coming, a lot more coming, a lot more happening. Uh, so um, let me see if I can get to those other announcements before I get into this song from my Miranda, the same song I love for her to sing all the time because this is what's going on around the world. There's so many things are happening. And then I'll come back and show some other news. I just thought I could... This is the news here you can go to. This is the one I'm talking about. You can go here to uh, News Nation and play this 15-minute video. I'm telling you, they give a good, very good update on what's going on. So I will leave this in the description box, okay, and you can go and see that. And then also, before I get to Miranda... I wanted you to go and see um, this uh, video from a minute to midnight, okay, uh, with Stan Diesel, uh, Cosmic Event, Cosmic Events and the End Times, okay, so I don't want you to miss it, I want you to go listen to it, I won't be listening to it myself today with my husband, and, uh, and not right now, after a while, but you need to go listen to this special uh, video coming from a minute, a minute to midnight. So I just want to announce those things to you. And so now I can go over here. And another announcement I'm going to do. I'm glad the Father just clicked on it for me because I'll forget about it. Uh, my friend from Florida, thank you so much, uh, Anne in Florida. Thank you so much for this article uh, and this website. Uh, I definitely want you guys to go and listen to, uh, uh, join, uh, start watching this channel uh, from... Um, Jeffrey Pathra, Pathra, if I'm saying that right. Watch his channel, people. You got a lot of information on here about things the news not going to tell you, okay? But I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of things are on here. You need to go watch some of these videos and materials. Uh, also, I was going to tell you what he's about, okay? He's a retired special operations soldier, former DIA intelligence collector, and ex DEA special agent targeted by the deep state so you need to go watch this material and learn some things people that you're not going to learn otherwise so i will definitely leave this in the description box for you to go and look at that as well i will have all these links in the description box okay please make sure you go and try to watch them people i know the day he having something coming on he how he come on at tuesdays and thursdays at 1 p.m pacific time and 3 p.m eastern time so uh, I hope you guys can uh, really uh, tune in to what they're talking about, a lot of political and a lot of things we need to know what's going on, okay, behind the scenes, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get on over to a song now. I hope I covered all my announcements. So let me go on over. It was another announcement, but I don't think they send it to me on my email yet. I don't think they're going to send it to me because I've been hoping they would send this to me. Uh... We just had a powerful earthquake, 7.2. I'm going to let the other guy talk about that later. But I'm telling you, uh, I, they, I tried to get them to send me this link, and I don't think this... Oh, here it is right now. Here it is right now. Okay, so I wanted you guys to see this too. This asteroid, four times the size of the Empire State Building, is barreling towards Earth on May 27th. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Special, special day for me, man. Me, for me. 
And uh, I'm going to be pushing uh, towards the 7 old number, babe, guys. You know, God have blessed me, blessed me to live this long. I'm just happy about it. So many people have died in 2021, 2020, uh, all down the ages of life. People have died. A lot of people dying right now. So you have to be thankful for your life, thankful for living. Thank you for it. I thank him for life. Okay. So tomorrow on May 27th, Asteroid four times the size of the Empire State Building. Wow. Burying towards Earth on May 27th. An enormous asteroid four times the size of the Empire State Building will make a close approach to Earth on May 27th, according to NASA Center for Near Earth Object Studies. Fear not. The asteroid named 730, 7335 1989 JA will soundly miss our planet by about 2.5 million miles, 4 million kilometers, or nearly 10 times the average distance between Earth and the moon. Still, given the space rock enormous size, 1.1 miles or 1.8 kilometers in diameter and relatively close proximity to Earth, NASA has classified the asteroid as potentially hazardous, meaning it could do enormous damage to our planet if its orbit never changes and the rock impacts earth people oh my goodness you know the father talks about this in the bible that it's going to be an asteroid that hit what that hit that caused what the waters to turn bitter so i don't know if this is going to be the event people we don't know we've got to keep praying praying praying watching and praying oh and praying that yeshua like he said pray that you'll be able to escape these things coming on the earth so that we'll be worthy to escape them okay so i'm gonna go ahead now and get to the song I, i'm glad that came up because finally I, I took a long time for google to send that but i want to uh, announce that to you so let me go ahead now and get over to uh, i'm gonna get i'm gonna let him do a, a announcement on the uh, shooting going on since we're talking about the shooting right now over in texas and then i'm gonna get into uh, a song uh, by Miranda, and then we're going into the Israel news. So let me go ahead and play him now, and then we'll get into the Israel news. Okay, let me go ahead and mute this out, and then I will uh, get into Miranda. I mean, after I uh, do ba uh, uh, Dawa, we're going to Miranda, then we're going to the Israel news. Let me get that right. So let me go ahead now and mute this out. <laughs> It's sad, isn't it? When people have nothing to lose, they do lose it, don't they? Well, what has happened down in Texas? Some deranged idiot went to an elementary school where there are second, third, and fourth graders, shot and killed 14 children and one school teacher. At least that's what it is reported right now. Apparently when the law enforcement got there on the scene, he started firing at them. Law enforcement returned fire and eliminated the threat, killed him. Um, and, and let me say this. I want to use this as a means to get people to try to comprehend what Pastor Dow's been preaching and teaching for years. And when I mean years, I'm talking like 30-something years. I advocate not sending your children to public school. I advocate, actually, you homeschooling your children because there's no better teacher than you, the mother, the first-line teacher. Um, and I also advocate that, well, if you can't afford it, you should downsize your lifestyle because we're heading into a very dark time if we're not on the door of it right now here in America. We're looking at food shortages before the end of the year. Um, we're looking at housing market crash, Inflation off the chain, stock market is, is volatile. And when you are in this type of environment, housing market is in jeopardy again, like in 2008. When you're in this type of environment and you've seen this before and you can just about predict what's getting ready to take place, when people have nothing to lose, they lose it. There are people out there that was heavily invested in Luna and cryptocurrency and many of them uh, decide to take skydiving lessons without a shoot. And they're going off into eternity dead. Um, I mean, people are just, they're going to start raising the head today. What I've always advocated. 
your own homestead. School your own children. Get away from the population centers. Don't get sucked into the paradigm that you've got to be around these schizophrenic maniacs in society in order to feel like you're a human being to exist. No. You're going to have to change your mind and learn how to change because if you're not going to change your mind, situations and circumstances like this is going to help you change it. Well, Boy, the devil's trying to work, I tell you. He's got to get off my channel in the name of Jesus right now, Messiah. I want this song, Miranda. I had it up there, people. I got to go pull it up now again. Hold on a minute, because I don't see it here. It was there, it was there, it was there. And I don't know why it's not here. So I don't know if I accidentally moved it off by mistake. So let me just rush over here and find it. No problem, okay? Just bear with me, people. <clears throat> Searching for happiness to escape from a life of emptiness, meaningless, hopelessness, pointlessness. To gain the whole world just to lose their soul. Help us, so oh Lord, to remember, even though we are in this world, we're passing. Hope is in what we don't see, waiting on you. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth as in heaven. Lord, let your kingdom come. Will be done here on earth. 
Shalom. I'm Jonathan Hassan, the editor-in-chief of TV7 Israel, and I would like to personally invite you to join us for our bi-weekly Jerusalem studio programs for a better in-depth understanding of Israel and its region. Seven Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Turkey and Israel agreed to reinvigorate efforts to enhance bilateral economic cooperation. Israel praises the United States for its final decision not to remove the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps from the State Department's designated list of foreign terrorist organizations. The RGC's top commander vows to avenge Colonel Hassan Sayyad Hodayari, who was assassinated earlier this week in the heart of the Iranian capital Tehran. Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu concluded a two-day trip to Israel in the Palestinian city of Ramallah this evening in what Jerusalem officials regarded as a positive visit ingrained in cautious optimism amid outstanding differences. In Ramallah yesterday, Minister Cavusoglu met with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and Foreign Minister Riyad al-Maliki during which Ankara's top diplomat reiterated Turkey's continued support for the Palestinian cause. Bağımsız ve egemen bir devlete sahip olma mücadelesinde Filistinli kardeşlerimizin yanında olmaya devam edeceğiz. Bu yıl Nakba'nın 74. İşgalin ise 55. yıl dönümü. İki devletli çözüme yönelik, elbette onun aşınmasına yönelik birçok olumsuz adımlarda gördük. Dolayısıyla iki devletli çözüm vizyonunu daha da diri tutmamız gerekiyor. Minister Çavuşoglu stressed, however, that Ankara's relations with Ramallah are completely independent from its relationship with the state of Israel. Filistin davasına desteğimiz İsrail ile ilişkilerimizin seyrinden tamamen e, bağımsızdır. Ama şunu da e, söylemek isterim. E, Filistin politikamızın değişmesi mümkün değildir. Ama bu diyaloğun özellikle gerginliğin azaltılmasının Ramazan'da olduğu gibi önemli katkı sağlayacağını, e, Filistin davasının veya Filistinlerin sesinin daha fazla duyurmasına da katkı sağlayacağına e, inanıyoruz. Subsequently this morning, the Turkish foreign minister met with his Israeli counterpart Yair Lapid at the foreign ministry in Jerusalem, where the two top diplomats deliberated aspirations of normalizing relations between the two countries. Mr. Minister, we won't pretend that our relationship has not seen its ups and downs, but we remember that Turkey was the first Muslim nation to recognize Israel back in 1949. And we have always known how to return to dialogue and cooperation. Nations with long histories always know how to close one chapter and open a new one. That is what we are doing here today. As part of the efforts to reinvigorate the Turkish-Israeli relationship, Ministers Shavushoglu and Lapid agreed to relaunch a joint economic commission that had been frozen for over a decade among other decisions to further enhance economic cooperation. We are expecting to see progress not only in our diplomatic and security relationship, relations, but in our economic ties as well. The goal is to form and expand economic and civil cooperation between our countries, to create business-to-business -business and people-to-people -people ties, and to leverage our two countries' comparative advantages regionally and globally. In our conversation today, Mr. Minister, we agreed to relaunch our Joint Economic uh, Commission and to begin working on a new civil aviation agreement between our two countries. 
Minister Chivushoglu, for his part, highlighted that bilateral relations will commence based on mutual respect to one another's sensitivities and voiced further appreciation for an exchange of views on regional issues of common interest at a time when Turkey is engaged in a military operation in northern Iraq, where it increasingly finds itself trading blows with Iranian proxy militias. We agree that despite our differences, uh, the continuation of a sustainable dialogue will be uh, beneficial. And this should be based on mutual respect to one uh, another's uh, sensitivities. This will be beneficial not only for our bilateral relations, but also uh, for peace in our region. And today in our discussion, uh, during our discussions, we also uh, ex have exchange of views on regional uh, issues, and I appreciate that. Foreign Minister Lapid, for his part, also seized the opportunity to praise the Biden administration for making a final decision that Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps will remain on the U.S. State Department's designated list of foreign terrorist organizations. We are fighting terror with determination and we expect our friends to cooperate with us in this battle. In this context, I want to take this opportunity to thank President Biden and Secretary of State Blinken for their decision to keep the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Guard Corps on the list of terrorist organizations subjected to sanctions. In recent months, Prime Minister Bennett, Defense Minister Gantz and I have worked closely with the Americans on this matter, and the American decision is further proof of the under, unbreakable alliance between us and the United States, an alliance based on deeply held shared values and core strategic interests. It is interesting to know that Washington's decision was made public yesterday at a time when the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps held a funeral for its assassinated Colonel Hassan Sayyad Khudayari, during which the RGC's Commander-in-Chief Major General Hussein Salami pledged revenge against those responsible. ولی زمان و موقعیت و کیفیتش رو ما تعیین خواهیم کرد ولی قطعا ما از دشمنانمون انتقام میدیم Well, no state or independent actor had claimed responsibility for the assassination. The Iranian police special forces chief sought to insinuate that Israel was behind the assassination, claiming that Israel was acting out over what he regarded as the RGC-backed uprising of Islamic communities throughout the region. خب اونها می ترسند و از این بیداری مردم و خیزش های مردمی قطعا خوشحال نیستند به همه خاطر افرادی رو که در این زمینه مؤثر هستند رو مورد هدف قرار می دن. It is important to know that attributing responsibility to Israel for the daring assassination in one of the most protected districts of Tehran is seemingly derived from the involvement of the slain RGC colonel Hodayari in planning acts of terror against Israeli targets overseas. It is further worth highlighting that Hodayari was known to be heavily involved in the Islamic Republic's military drone industry, which systematically targets via Iranian proxies Tehran's enemies throughout the region. Meanwhile, despite presiding U.S. sanctions targeting Iran's oil exports and banking system, over Tehran's efforts to attain nuclear weapon capabilities and other malign activity throughout the Middle East, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi concluded a visit to the Gulf Sultanate of Oman, where he managed to secure 12 cooperation documents and memorandums of understanding in various fields, including, most notably, in the energy sector. Moreover, after signing the separate agreements, President Raisi boasted in a statement to regime-run media outlets, quote, Despite U.S. threats and sanctions, the Islamic Republic has made great headway in areas mostly affected by sanctions, such as the peaceful nuclear, medical and defense industries. Turning to the Swiss city of Davos, where Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan Saud attended a World Economic Forum panel, on global energy markets, during which he was asked whether the kingdom remains concerned about the Biden administration's unyielding resolve to get a nuclear deal with Iran at almost any price 
in order to offset the negative developments in the energy market. In Saudi Arabia, and I think it's the same in the other GCC states, we are very much focused, you know, Vision 2030 and other elements, on delivering um, a vision of the future that is built on hope, that is built on prosperity, that is built on development, that is built on cooperation. Uh, and this is a message that, we, as I say, we in Saudi Arabia, but also the other GC states who all have their individual uh, visions for the future that are very much in that same uh, vein, uh, are trying to send to our region, including to our neighbors in Iran. Our hands are stretched out. We are trying to send the message that uh, going into a new era of cooperation in the region can deliver benefits for all of us. Now, that does need a decision. It needs a decision uh, in Iran to sign on to that vision of, of a, a much more prosperous, cooperative future. Uh, can that happen? We are in dialogue. All of the GCC states uh, have a strong, uh, uh, active dialogue with Iran. We coordinate very closely on that dialogue. We talk to each other about it. Uh, uh, and we have made some progress, but not enough. Riyadh's top diplomat continued by stressing that Saudi Arabia was not opposed to a good deal on curbing Tehran's nuclear proliferation. We continue to uh, encourage our neighbors in Iran to lean into what can be a very, very important uh, sea change in our region. Now, of course, uh, JCPOA, if it happens, will be a potentially a good thing if it's a good deal. But for us, uh, it's most important that we address the holistic uh, uh, issues, uh, you know, nuclear non-proliferation, regional activity, and that can be done, but it needs a sincere desire to look to the future rather than the past. Thank you for watching us. TV7 Israel News will not broadcast tomorrow in light of Ascension Day. And on Friday, Amir Oren will be joined here in the studio by a panel of senior practitioners, diplomats and officers with the aim of tackling the latest on the geostrategic landscape from Jerusalem's perspective for yet another edition of TV7 Powers in Play. Therefore, I would like to wish you a Shabbat Shalom and Mevorach. Keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. And Lord willing, we will see you again for TV7 Israel News next week on Monday at the same time. Report today. Today is May 26, 2022, 9.30 a.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. We've had a very large earthquake in Peru. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake was reported about 13 kilometers west-northwest of Nzangarao, Peru. At 217.8 kilometers with an associated tsunami warning. Now, this earthquake went off in a volcanic park in Peru that runs down in Peru, Argentina, and Chile, known as the Peruvian Chile Wedge, and there are thousands of volcanic cones that have gone off in the past. It is on or near a plate boundary, and this is obviously a volcanic range, as I just mentioned. Let's take a look at some additional information. What we see is it's happening right over this uh, volcano that's been erupting, a 7.2 magnitude, southern Peru. You can see the actual park itself here. I call it a park. I did do a video on it. There's thousands, if not more, volcanic cones in the area. And if I put on all of the volcanoes, you will see that it's on a huge volcanic ridge as well. Now let's get some additional information. So like it happened about two hours ago. And what we'll do is we'll go for some detailed information now. Coming in at 7.2 and the source is the USGS. So there could be some well, differences in opinion. A major 7.2 earthquake, May 26, 2022. Two hours and 28 minutes ago. Take a look at this. How powerful was it? Well, let's figure it out. Wow. 
59.5 atomic bombs worth of energy were released with the 7.2. That is the largest explosion I've seen to date. 59.5 atomic bombs. Wow. So it looks like they came in all over the board, 7.2 being the general consensus with the USGS, the Europeans, the Australians, Raspberry Shake, a 7.9 came in from the Ecuadorian Seismic Association, believe it or not, right there close to the blast. The French came in at 6.6, .6, la la la, uh, and, well, you can see that others came in at different magnitudes, but we're going to go with 7.2. And what did we say? 59.5 atomic bombs worth of energy were released? There's got to be a mistake. So this is a big one, folks, and that energy is going to work its way north and south. We are long overdue for a large quake in North America, i.e. really in the United States. So please stay prepared, be prepared, especially if you're on the west coast of the U.S. Uh, these things come in twos and threes, as we all know. Share, subscribe, and always remember that anything is possible in Bizarre World. This summer is almost upon us, and power grids worldwide won't produce enough electricity to meet the soaring demand that we're already seeing. And that's going to threaten more than a billion people. It could be well beyond that number. And most of these people are going to be sitting in the dark because of these rolling blackouts that are a part of this massive global operation that's going down. They try to say that the grids are stretched thin because fossil fuel shortages, because of droughts and heat waves, of which they're not even combating. They're not even trying to fight back against them. Some could argue and say that they're driving them, but they're definitely doing nothing like cloud seeding in these drought-stricken areas to help the situation. Absolutely nothing. Then you look at the commodity disruption, the soaring prices, everything that they want to pin on the situation in Ukraine, which has been fueled. And then they want to say it's been a failed green energy transition because they shut down one too many fossil fuel generation plants. And then combining this all together is what they call the perfect storm of blackouts that are going to threaten much of the northern hemisphere. Now, this goes into Europe. This goes into Asia. They start talking about a heat wave here recently, causing hours-long daily blackouts in Pakistan, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, India. And here in the United States, Texas just got a small taste of what this summer is going to bring. When it mysteriously had multiple power plants get triggered off, thrown offline. What's going to happen here within the next 30 days as summer kicks off? They're predicting that at least a dozen U.S. states from California to the Great Lakes are at risk of electricity outages this summer. So we've warned about these things over and over again. I break them down further on the live streams, but this is another heads up here. Over a billion people at risk. They're just openly stating now. now join me on the live streams where I break stuff like this down. report today. Today's May 26, 2022, 2 p.m. here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. The World Health Organization Global Pandemic Treaty includes plans for mandatory universal digital passport and ID systems. This week, global elitists and world leaders from across the West 
are gathered in Davos, Switzerland for the WHO's annual World Health Assembly. While convened, attendees from all 194 WHO member countries are set to vote on major amendments to the international health regulations that would effectively strip all power away from sovereign countries and turn it over to the WHO's Global Health Board in the event of any future pandemic. If the ratifications are agreed to this week, the WHO would also be granted sole authority over what constitutes a pandemic. And as we have seen over the past two years, just about anything qualifies as an existential threat to public health, including but not limited misinformation, parents protesting at school boards, free speech, and of course, well, racism. The fact that the WHO is on the cusp of unrestricted authority to decide these measures should terrify every American and everyone from any sovereign country for that matter. What are these leaders doing? What's more, the changes also include plans for a mandatory and universal vaccine passport system that's overseen by the WHO, i.e. mandatory vaccinations. In fact, the globalist organization has already contracted a German-based company called T-Systems to develop the technology for these vaccine passports. They're that confident the measures will be approved this week. Now, I would say that any leader that would vote for this would actually uh, be committing a crime against his country. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure you share this video. Please subscribe and always remember that anything is possible in Bizarro World. Okay, guys, I just wanted to make sure I had all my news out of the way, and I'm going to get into the time is right, servant of God, and messenger from Vermont for you be ready. Uh, here are they messengers, and I'm going to get into the Joel, and my husband going to join me for Acts, I mean for uh, Ezekiel 7. So let me go ahead and do that now, and then we might do missions at the end. So let me go ahead and do this now. Um, did I do that? Did I mute out? I didn't. Hello everyone. Welcome to this channel. Today is May 25th, 2022. This word was given to me by the Lord on January 25th, 2021, almost a year and a half ago. This word has never been released before. Today is the first posting. The title the Lord gave me is, I told you so. The scripture he gave me is Jeremiah 21 verses 5 and 6. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast, and they shall die of a great pestilence. And this is the word that he gave me. My son, I have spoken to you and many others, yet because my hand has not slapped down hard on this nation, many have doubted my words. But I tell you now, I have removed an evil king and replaced him with an extremely evil king. While my children are still in shock, I will replace the extremely evil king with the most evil woman. I tell you now, I told you so. I have given you, my children, much time to repent, yet none have. Instead, they cry out for the king who led them into captivity. I have sent the great delusion, and my children have fallen into the snare. Only my remnant have not been deceived by this delusion. Many in this nation have placed their faith in a man. Did I not tell them I will remove everything they place ahead of me? I am a jealous God and will have no gods ahead of me. I have taken away your freedoms. I have taken away your sports. 
I have taken away your jobs, yet you have not repented. I have taken away your faces and hid them behind a mask. I have taken away your gatherings. I have taken away your money, yet no one has repented. Now I have taken away your king, and I see how much you love him over me. My son, I have given these people a king after their own heart. I told you so many times. Now darkness descends upon this nation, and my confused children are in total fear. I also told you this, Thus saith the Lord, The dark times are now here, and will get much darker. Soon my children will be hunted down and forced into captivity. Many will perish as the evil one declares war on my saints. My son, I told you what will come to pass, yet because what I said did not happen in your time frame, many doubted. You are not alone. Many of my chosen have doubted, but stand by. The shaking is coming. I told you so. I have heard my watchman's cries of repentance, and I have forgiven you. Continue to seek me, and I will speak, for the evil that is coming upon this nation will not let up nor go away. This nation, called Mystery Babylon, will fall in one hour. I told you so. My son, continue to cry out, repent to this lost nation. Continue to cry out, repent to this deaf, dumb, and blind church. Many will start to wake up after the great shakings. So much destruction is just ahead, and war is just behind. I love you, my remnant. Don't give up. Stand fast, and you will be rewarded. I am coming soon. I told you so. Amen. Lord Jesus. Please take this word to the Lord in prayer. And as always, thank you. Please like and share. God bless for now. Bye-bye.
All right, guys, I just wanted you to see these uh, visions, um, these uh, messages from the watchman. And so now I'm going to get into the Bible, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk first. My husband will join me in a minute. Uh, he gonna go over, um, he's going to go over Ezekiel 7. So let me go ahead and do uh, my part, my portion. And I'm telling you guys, I had this last night when I was... When I was praying, uh, I asked the Lord. I was telling him about Shaviot coming. You know, we having a uh, Pentecost coming, the 29th. And I was saying, Father, uh, you know, I'm wondering, are we going to receive the latter rain? Are we going to receive your power? Are we going to receive your Holy Spirit? Because the way things are getting so evil, we're going to have to have some kind of power from you to survive, to go through these things coming. So he gave me uh, this uh, Acts, um, <clears throat> told me to go to Acts 2, and I went to Acts 2, and I'm not going to read all of Acts 2, but I'm going to go down to the main part he showed me. Uh, he gave me this here uh, in um, Acts 2.14. He told me to start from 14, and I'm going to start from 2.13 and let you know. Others was making a joke about the people saying they was drunk with wine, you know, and... Uh, and so he said, but others made a joke of it and deris derisively, derisively said they are simply drunk and full of sweet intoxicating wine. Father, be with me as I read your word to the people and we get into Ezekiel 7 after. Uh, let your Holy Spirit come be with us for the reading of your word today. Uh, talk to me, uh, speak to me, uh, speak to my husband and help us to get this word out to the people. Important times are here upon us, Father. We know that the people have disobeyed. They have just absolutely been in defiance against you. And so now it's time for us to rise up and sound the alarm and do what we can while we can because we are in the end at the end. So thank you so much for your Holy Spirit talking through us today. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we ask. So it says here, Peter's sermon at the Pentecost, okay? And so I just thought it was so funny. He showed me Rat 2, Book of Acts. And, you know, if you go over to... Um, we go over to Joel. Okay, I'm gonna, I have to go switch over here to Joel real quick. And we're going to go over to Joel and get back to Acts. Because in Joel, if you go to Joel uh, 2, 28 to 30. Okay, I'm going to read it right now. If you go to Joel, Joel did this, this, this, this message as well. And he said, the Lord will pour out his spirit. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Okay, right now. And afterwards I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, even upon the main men servants, okay? Even upon the men servants and upon the maid servants in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth and blood and fire and columns of smoke. Everybody's talking about troubles coming, the sky, in the sky, the heavenlies, you know. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, people. Okay. And whoever shall call on the name of the Lord, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered and saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the remnant shall be those whom the Lord calls. Oh, hallelujah. And I always tell my grandchildren, you know, they, they, I never know if I'm going to see them again. And I always tell them, you, if a quake come, if this come, if that come, you call on the name of Jesus and he will save you. And so he said, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered and saved. And then we're going back over here to ask people. I'm just kind of naive about it because I'm always asking the Lord to show me things. So, you know, when he showed me Acts last night, I was just like, wow, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I never even compared uh, Joel and Joel 2 with Acts 2. Never, never, never. Okay, so I was really like, wow, amazed. Okay, because I know Pentecost about to come, old people. So it says here, I'm going to go down here. They was picking at these people saying, oh, they're full of, they just drunk and everything. And so let me go down to Peter's sermon at the Pentecost. So the Act 2.14, but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, You Jews and all you residents of Jerusalem, let this be explained to you so that you will know and understand. Listen closely to what I have to say. 
For these men are not drunk, as you imagine, for it is only of the third hour, about 9 a.m. of the day. 9 a.m. in the morning, early in the morning, okay? But instead, this is the beginning of what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And I say, oh my good, there it is, there it is, Joel, right over in Acts 2. And it shall come to pass in those last days, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions uh, grant divinely granted appearances and your old men shall dream dreams yes and all my men servants also and all my maid servants in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy you know, there's no respect to a person, you know. Yeshua say male or female. We all want a Yeshua Messiah. Once you become born again, he can call on men servants, maid servants, and he say he's going to do that. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. And I'm waiting on that spirit. I'm waiting on that latter rain. I'm waiting on Shavuot. I'm waiting on Pentecost. People, I'm telling you, could this be the year? Could this be the year it happened? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm really excited about this revelation last night. Okay. So he's saying they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and smoke and vapor. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the obvious day of the Lord comes, that great and notable and conspicuous and renowned day. Okay, oh my people. They saying now we're having what going on? You see all the volcanoes that that brother showed? And now we're having the asteroid coming May 27th tomorrow? Oh my goodness, people. I don't know what's going to do. They said if it hit, it could be hazardous. I don't know. Only Yeshua knows. Only Yeshua knows, people. And it shall be that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. Shall be saved. You men of Israel, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man accredited and pointed out and shown forth and commended and attested to you by God, by the mighty works and wonders and signs which God through him, through God work through him in your midst, as you know yourselves know, this Jesus, when delivered up according to the definite and fixed purpose and settled plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and put out the way, killing him by the hands of lawless and wicked men. So I'm going to let my husband come on over here, but God raised him up, liberating him from the pains of death seeing that it was not possible for him to continue to be controlled or retained by it. For David says in regard to him, I saw the Lord constantly before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken or overthrown or cast down. So people, it's time for us to give our life to Messiah. I'm telling you, I don't know what can happen any moment. I, I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy that Yeshua gave a confirmation of that, that absolutely Sometime I, I just say, man, you know, you ask the Lord, he show you. He does. He show you. And so do you think we can have Shavuot and Pentecost having a, the latter rain fall, the spirit of God fall on all flesh? Oh, oh my goodness. I, I, I, I mean, you know, we've been, feeling his, we've been feeling his spirit every morning so strong. When I wake up so strong, when I pray every day, every, all this week. So I'm just like, wow, is it possible, Father? We, you're going to help your remnant? You're going to help your people? Because, you know, the world is so wicked. So wicked. How can you just go and shoot down a bunch of people? Because they are wicked. They have no soul. As they say, the people call them dark souls. Okay, whatever. But, man, we need to be born again. We need to get born again. We need to be born again. I feel the power right now. We need to be born again. He's the only one can save us. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to let my husband go ahead and say, but I had to say that. Jesus is our only hope. He's our only hope. And all the crisis is going around us. He is the only hope. He's the only hope, people. It's time to get ready before the trumpet sound. Oh, it's time to get ready right now. Right now, right now. Oh, so you can go ahead and read That's Ezekiel. A good, that's a good Pentecost <laughs> word, dear. What Pentecost word? Eze Acts 2. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're over here now in Ezekiel 7. <laughs> you can jump right in whenever. The word of Yahuwah came to me and said, you, son of man, Lord Yahuwah says this to the land of Israel, an end, an end has come to the four borders of the land. Now the end is upon you, for I am sending out my wrath on you, and I will judge you according to your ways. Then I will bring all your abominations upon you. 
for my eyes will not pity you, and I will not spare you. Instead, I will bring your ways upon you, and your abominations will be in your midst, so you will know that I am Yahuwah. <laughs> Lord Yahuwah says this, Disaster, a unique disaster. Behold, it is coming, and end is surely coming. The end has woken up against you. Behold, it is coming. Wow, wow. that's some hard word. Yeah. Your doom <laughs> is coming to you who inhabit the land. <laughs> the time has come. The day of destruction is near, and the mountains will no longer be joyful. Mm -hmm. Now before long, I will pour out my fury against you and fill up my wrath upon you, when I judge you according to your ways and bring all your abominations upon you. Mm -hmm. For my eye will not look compassionately, and I will not spare you. As you have done, I will do to you, and your abominations will be in your midst. So you will know that I am Yahuwah, the one punishing you. Behold, the day is coming. Doom has gone out. The rod has bloomed the blossom of pride. Oh, isn't that amazing? So much pride. So much pride. Violence has grown up into a rod of wickedness. Mm -hmm. None of them and none of their multitude, none of their wealth and none <laughs> of their importance will last. That's right. They're going to throw gold in the streets, silver in the streets, uh, the money going away, uh, banks closing. It's just going to be a lot of chaos, people. We put our trust in the man who made us. The man who made us. Why don't we do that? Why don't people do that? Go ahead. The time is coming. The day has come close. Do not let the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, <laughs> since my anger is on the entire multitude. <laughs> for the seller will never return to that which is sold for as long as they live, since the vision is against the entire multitude. They will not return, for no man living in his sin will be strengthened. Living in your sin. Stop sinning. Repent. Stop That's sinning. Go and tell the Lord, I'm a sinner. I need your help, Father. I'm weak. We have to die daily every day. I have to pray at night. Father, forgive me for things I said today. Listen today. Saw today. Whatever. We need to be always in our Father's face, people. Always in our Father's face. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> they have blown the trumpet and made everything ready. But there is no one marching to battle, since my anger is on the entire multitude. The sword is on the outside, and the plague and famine are inside the building. Those who are in the field will die by the sword, while famine and plague will consume those in the city. Boy, does that sound familiar. <laughs> but some survivors will escape from among them, and they will go to the mountains. Like doves of the valleys, all of them will moan, each man for his iniquity. Every hand will falter, and every knee will be weak as water. And they will wear sackcloth, and terror will cover them and shame will be on every face, and baldness in all of their heads. Mm. Well, mm. we're there. <laughs> they will throw their silver into the streets, and their gold will be like refuse. Their silver and their gold will not be able to rescue them in the day of Yahuwah's mm. rage. Mm. Their lives will not be saved, and their hunger will not be satisfied, because their iniquity has become a stumbling block. Oh, boy. They took jeweled ornaments in their pride, and they formed idolatrous figures depicting their abominations and their detestable things they made with them. Therefore, I am making these things unclean to them. Mm -hmm. Then I will give those things into the hand of foreigners as plunder, and to the wicked of the earth as plunder, and they will defile them. Then I will turn my face away from them. When they defile my cherished place, bandits will enter it and defile it. Make a chain, because the land is filled with the judgment of blood, and the city is full of violence. So I will bring the most wicked of the ethno-linguistic nations, and they will possess their houses, and I will bring on an end to the pride of the mighty, for their consecrated places will be defiled. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Fear will come. They will seek shalom, but there will be none. Disaster upon disaster will come. And there will be intelligence report after intelligence report. <laughs> then they will seek a vision from the prophet. But the Torah will perish from the priest and advice from the elders. Oh, that man just told you guys they're going to be demanding that we take, you know what, demanding that we do this and do that. And so God going to protect his people uh, some kind of way. I told you guys, don't live in fear. Don't be getting all pushy with these people. You better listen to the Father, the man who made you. You better repent. You better really know that you are born again. Ask for his Holy Spirit to come inside of you and cleanse you and save you. Because nothing else will, people. Nothing else will. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
The king will mourn mm -hmm. and the prince will dress in despair, while the hands of the people of the land will tremble in fear. According to their own ways, I will do this to them. I will judge them with their own standards until they know that I am Yahuwah. Oh, boy. Oh, it's boy. now the United States of oh, boy. who? Yeah. Oh, guys, I hope you got something out of that. I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this video. We're going to go to a mission report real quick and then get into our Maranatha. Uh, if I don't know where it is. Yeah, here it is. Oh, thank you, Father. Okay. So let's play this real quickly and get into Maranatha, and then I'm just going to go straight into Maranatha after this is over, and then we'll pray, pray and let you guys go, okay? So let me go ahead and mute this out again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Giver. God bless you. Go follow the Spirit of the Bible. So, Chetur got a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Giver. God bless you. Yes, sir. Cut, cut, palm up. Cut, cut. Hey, palm up. Cut, cut. Abje, ten seconds. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Giver. Thank you, Giver. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Giver. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Giver. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Giver. God bless you.
బైబిల్ ఊపితే వీడియో కదిస్తే బైబిల్ అంటారు ఈ మధ్యలో ఎత్తట్లేదు అయితే ఆమె పైకి చేతులు థ్యాంక్ యూ జీస్ అనండి థ్యాంక్ యూ గివర్ థ్యాంక్ యూ గివర్ గాడ్ బ్లెస్ యూ గాడ్ బ్లెస్ యూ Okay. Oh, maybe not. Oh, Maranatha. I forgot. Hold on, guys. I I'm I September 30, the special resurrection. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 12, 2. It was at midnight that God chose to deliver his people. As the wicked were mocking around them, suddenly the sun appeared, shining in his strength, and the moon stood still. Dark, heavy clouds came up and clashed against each other. But there was one clear place of settled glory whence came the voice of God like many waters, shaking the heavens and the earth. There was a mighty earthquake. The graves were opened, and those who had died in faith under the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath, came forth from their dusty beds, glorified, to hear the covenant of peace that God was to make with those who had kept his law. Those who sleep in Jesus will be called from their prison house to a glorious immortality. He has risen, dear friends, and in your despondency you may know that Jesus is by your side to give you peace. I know what I am talking about. I have seen the time when I thought the waves were going over my head. In that time I felt my Savior precious to me. When my eldest son was taken from me, I felt my grief was very great. But Jesus came to my side, and I felt his peace in my soul. The cup of consolation was placed to my lips, and when he who had stood by my side for thirty-six years was taken, we had labored together side by side in the ministry, but we had to fold the hands of the warrior and lay him down to rest in the silent grave. Again my grief seemed very great, but after all came the cup of consolation. Jesus is precious to me. He walked by my side, and he will walk by your side. When our friends go into the grave, they are beautiful to us. It may be our father or mother that we lay away. When they come forth, those wrinkles are all gone, but the figure is there, and we know them. We want to be prepared to meet these dear friends as they come forth in the resurrection morning. Shall we lay hold upon the hope set before us in the gospel that we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is? We're going to see him as he is. That's right. I can't wait for that moment. Um, I'm asking you guys to uh, know that we did go out yesterday. And we've seen, uh, we, got to, nope, we got to see a few homeless people. Uh, so uh, I was really happy to know we could meet them. And you could see the lady holding a Bible. We gave out, a, we gave out about six Bibles, didn't we? A lot of Bibles. Several Bibles and they didn't want any, several blankets. Several blankets, Bibles, blankets. money. Uh, for gas and if they need a sandwich, hot meal, whatever. Uh, so we did have that opportunity yesterday. I was glad to know, uh, just kind of went around the park and uh, the lady told me to look in the parks and stuff like that. So we ran around the park and, and there they were. You know, she was just happy to get the Bible. They like these uh, po little pocket Bibles because they can put them in their bags, backpacks better. So I have to order some more now because I don't have any more. So anyway... But we know uh, God is uh, always going to be looking out for his homeless people. And we thank you so much for your contributions and your help. So we're going to go ahead and close out with that and uh, pray. So uh, I just want to let you guys know time is very, very short. Uh, it's at the bottom, honey. No. No? Okay. Oh, you have a new one. Oh, he got a new one. He's been working. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That's beautiful. I like the little cup thing. <laughs> 
That's beautiful. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. And say so, also, oh, well, thank you guys for all your offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, those that need in mission fields. May Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you. Uh, our donation options are Tidely app, <clears throat> Cash app, uh, Bump card. Um, uh, you can go to your yeah, Bump card. Uh, our website is at fmcmi.org, marner.com at gmail.com at PayPal. Uh, you can mail in your donations at Fill My Cup Ministries. Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Uh, shipping address, Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Oh, what a nice job you did on that. Thank you so much for improving it. So anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and pray and let you guys go because I'm already at an hour and 19 minutes, but I had to come here and get this out. I love this statement here. I love this statement here. Before you act, listen. Before you react, think. Before you spend, earn. Before you criticize, wait. Before you pray, forgive. Okay. Before you quit, try. I really like it. And so uh, we need to understand we're in the end at the end. So we need to be giving our life to the master. Uh, as we know, all these things are going on in Daniel's dream. All the things coming. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray. Uh, and let, and let them We're go. at the feet of that statue, folks. Yeah, we're at the feet of that statue. That's right. It's sure going to be the rock. He's the rock. He's going to make his own uh, kingdom. He's probably His own kingdom. Way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As these crises go on, all this here monkey pox and all these things they're doing. We're going to have to try and trust in him. This is a beautiful clouds over a volcano. Volcano. Uh, clouds over a volcano. And I know we're going to have a lot of volcanoes. You heard that guy? You saw him on that map. He showed you all the volcanoes all around the Pacific, all over. And now we got an asteroid coming tomorrow. We just got to be really, really happy. But I'm going to be celebrating my 70th birthday, and I'm just praising God for it because I don't have to be here. I don't have to be here. <laughs> this is when I was, uh, I think I was uh, 60, 62 here or something. But now I'll be 70 tomorrow if I live overnight, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and let my husband pray. And I thank you guys for all your support all these years and months and weeks. And just continue to pray for us if we pray for you, okay? Father, we do thank you for a gorgeous time to be alive, <laughs> wonderful time, exciting time to be alive because we are waiting. We're preparing ourselves to meet you. We pray that everyone that gets to watch these videos, everyone that hears our voice, is also preparing their soul to meet you. Because mm -hmm. the time is running short. Mm -hmm. The time is coming to a close. Yes. Human time yes. is coming to a close. Yes. And what a wonderful day it is. Mm -hmm. And it will be even greater. Mm -hmm. It'll be glorious. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you. Change our hearts into what you want us to be. Yes. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you so much, Father, for the people and your messengers. Oh, my God. Joel and Acts 2 and Joel 2, man. Guys, go read both of those again. The whole chapters. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I hope this, oh, I hope this power will come down on Pentecost this year. So be ready for Pentecost Sunday, 20, the 29th. Uh, I will be back when I can. If I don't be back tomorrow, I'll probably be back Sabbath. I don't know. I just, well, as the Lord showed me, there's so many things going on, you never know, but I'm going to be back. So I'll be back when I get back, okay? So I love you guys. Thank you so much. Shalom, shalom, shalom. shalom. Love you guys. Right. Shalom. Bye -bye. <laughs>